Okay, uh, it's uh, time, so uh, I think we can start in a few seconds. Okay, uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending on which part of the world you are in, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Anshuman Varma, the Program Officer and Deputy Head of the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Mechanization of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia in the Pacific, or SCAP. Uh, on behalf of our center, uh, it is indeed my great pleasure to uh, welcome all of you uh, to this uh, ANTAM web training uh, on introduction to uh, safety testing. Uh, we have uh, a lot of participants uh, joining us uh, both on uh, MS Teams uh, as well as on uh, YouTube. Uh, and uh, once again, a very warm welcome to, to, to all our audience. Uh, the uh, objective of uh, today's uh, uh, web training uh, is uh, firstly, it, this is uh, a substitute or a replacement for the uh, usual training of trainers of uh, ANTAM, the Asian and Pacific Network for Testing of Agriculture Machinery that uh, CSAM uh, conducts uh, annually. Uh, in particular, uh, the web training will uh, seek to uh, illustrate the concepts leading to safety and certification uh, requirements and standards, uh, and then also present an uh, initial overview of uh, practices uh, for safety testing of agricultural uh, machinery. So uh, we hope uh, you will find this uh, web training of, uh, of relevance and of use to uh, the work that you do. Uh, I am pleased to uh, introduce uh, the uh, opening speaker in uh, our first session, uh, Dr. Uh, Lee Yutong, uh, the head of the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Mechanization. Uh, but uh, before I invite uh, Dr. Lee to deliver the uh, opening remarks, uh, maybe just a few uh, housekeeping announcements. Uh, firstly, uh, I would request uh, the speakers to uh, be on mute when you are uh, not speaking. Uh, secondly, uh, there will be a, a question and answer session uh, at the end uh, of, the, uh, of, of, of the event. So we will be taking uh, Q&As uh, at that time. Um, thirdly, uh, we will be uh, circulating an evaluation questionnaire to gather feedback from the participants uh, of the event, and we look forward to receiving your feedback uh, through through that route. Uh, and then finally, uh, this event will be uh, recorded, so just for your information. So uh, without further ado, uh, may I request uh, Dr. Lee Yutong to please deliver her opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Ashma. Uh, distinguished the presenters and the participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning or good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. On behalf of CSAM, the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Mechanization of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, ASCAP, I wish to thank you for joining us today. Introduction to safety testing. Uh, I'm very happy to connect with ma many familiar names and faces for this event. Uh, as it uh, means to be a uh, training for ANTAM, the Asian and the Pacific Network for Testing of Agricultural Machinery, uh, of which uh, CSAM uh, is the Secretariat. But I also know many of you are joining us for the first time, so please allow me to spend uh, a few words to introduce the network and also let me extend a special welcome to our new members from Pudan, who are joining the ANTAM activity for the first time. So welcome, Pudan colleagues. Uh, ANTAM is an initiative led by ASCAP CSAM that aims to harmonize uh, testing standards for agricultural machinery in the Asia Pacific region. This has been an ultimate goal of facilitating its trade but most importantly, it promotes the use of safe, efficient, and environmentally sound agricultural machinery in support of sustainable agricultural goals. ANTAM also has the objective 
to build the capacity for testing facilities and the personnel, personnel in its member states. Although most of our past trainings have focused on application of the testing codes developed by ANTAM, we have always paired this with trainings related to other relevant aspects of agricultural mechanization. So thanks to our Japanese colleagues proposing, and other members also have uh, asking us to facilitate trainings focusing on safety. And this is, of course, an, a crucial issue for all stakeholders involve, involved in agricultural mechanization because lack of safety measures can lead not only to injuries of operators, but also to environmental degradation and poor food security. And the safe machineries will have a positive impact in enabling recovery from shocks and building long-term resilience of farming communities. It is crucial to have a strong understanding of the importance of safety requirements as well as the aspects that need to test it to ensure these requirements are met. And I'm sure that our excellent speakers today will help you to gaining this expertise. At the ASCAP CSAM, we're happy to leverage the wealth of knowledge of our partners to organize this first web training on safety testing. I would like to thank you all from the Antam Technical Reference Unit, especially in NAMA, our Italian uh, Agency for Agricultural Mechanization and the Secretariat to the European uh, Network for Testing of Agricultural Machinery. So I can see Sandro, our old friend. So welcome you. And also to OECD, which is a member of the Antam Advisory Council. I'm also very grateful to the experts from our participant countries that will share with us today their best practices. The Institute of Agricultural Machinery, National Agriculture and Food Research Organization of Japan, and the Certification and Accreditation Institute of the Certification and Accreditation Administration of China. Over the past years, five ANTAM trainings and two of trainers have been organized. And this year, unfortunately, this was not possible because of the travel restriction that pandemic of COVID-19 has brought over the world. And I hope that this web training will be the first of a series of events dedicated to safety testing, and that this can become an e-learning module uh, courses to made available to all on ASCAP's platforms dedicated to continuous learning on topics relate to the achievements of the Sustainable Development Goals. For this reason, I invite you to compare the evaluation module that my colleagues will share at the end of this web training, where you will be able to indicate the topics you would like us to address more in detail in the future. After overall being presented today, I also hope that some of you will join in us and support the preparation of other web trainings. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I trust that today we will help promote a safer and more sustainable agricultural mechanization. And I very much look forward to continue working with all of you for this objective. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, for your uh, enlightening uh, remarks and providing a context to uh, the web training uh, for today. Uh, uh, I, it is uh, my pleasure to, uh, to moderate the following sessions of uh, this uh, web training. Uh, we have two substantive sessions to follow and uh, after that we will have a, a Q&A round as well. Uh, so with that, uh, let us proceed to the first of the two substantive sessions. Uh, on uh, defining safety and uh, importance of uh, certification policies. Uh, in this session, uh, we will have uh, definitions of safety and some statistical data and examples on how safety is managed uh, in different regions. Uh, also, we will cover ground on why uh, standardization and certification are important to the safety of food systems and, and see some policy examples as well. Um, 
So uh, I would just like to remind participants uh, once again that uh, while you can submit your uh, questions uh, in the in the chat box in uh, MS Teams as well as on YouTube, uh, we will be uh, taking up the uh, questions when we come to the Q and A session uh, later. So uh, with that, uh, let me produce uh, pr proceed on to the uh, invitation to the next speaker. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Sandro Liberatori, uh, the Director General of uh, INAMA, the uh, Italian Agency for Agricultural Machinery, uh, which is also the Secretariat of uh, the European Network for the Testing of uh, Agricultural Machinery, or uh, ENTAM, and also the Technical Reference Unit of uh, ENTAM. So uh, with that, uh, Dr. Sandro, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. And thanks for inviting me in this, I think, very important uh, webinar because uh, safety is really a key issue for agriculture. I would like to share my presentation and uh, it's on my screen so we can you can follow me better with uh, the presentation. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. Um, Not yet. So I, I sent it even yesterday, so maybe it's possible to. It's now on the screen by I see it very well on the screen. Can you see it, please? OK, uh, not yet. Uh, OK, so uh, we will share from our side and uh, here goes. Here goes. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> So in Italy, it's very early this morning. <laughs> so safety is a very important issue. It's more than 30 years and working in the agricultural sector. And I think that really safety is a key issue. But we have to divide safety in three main items. Uh, please, the first slide, if possible. It's the human safety, the food security, because it's also an issue dealing with safety and environmental safety. Human safety is related with the people working in agriculture. And it's very important. We see a picture I made during the years. It's a man standing on the machine. Probably the machine is working better, but there is a high risk for the man standing on the machine. Environmental safety. Environment is very important. You know why. And the safety of the environment, especially dealing with crop protection machinery, sprayers, uh, mineral fertilizer, we can have a lot of damage to the environment. And the food security. So I made some years ago a presentation inviting all stakeholders to consider the three items of safety all together and not separately because commonly the approach is to keep the human safety separate from the environmental safety and again separate from the food security. But I think it's very important to have a common approach because safety is really a key issue for agriculture. So we can go to the next slide, please. And here I have a video because images can give a stronger message than words. There is some text in Italian. I apologize for that. I couldn't delete it, but the video can show very, very well what is the importance of human safety on an agricultural tractor. Maybe we can display the video, please originale di tipo omologato. Le trattrici commercializzate prima del 1974 possono essere adeguate fino al dicembre 2006 utilizzando la circolare del Ministero del Lavoro 4981, dal gennaio 2007 utilizzando la linea guida ISPES sui telai di sicurezza. Per quanto riguarda i sedili e i dispositivi di ritenzione, devono essere adeguati utilizzando la linea guida ISPES sulle cinture di sicurezza. So I think that these images can speak very well. You see the difference 
and later who will speak about OECD will deal more in detail about that. But you see the consequence of an unsafe machine, in this case an agricultural tractor, that can uh, create a high risk and the consequence is very bad for the operator. So this is, uh, I think this video speaks very well what is the meaning of uh, human safety in uh, agriculture. But there is another video on the next slide that deals with other kind of machines and can show you again the importance of the human safety. Please, in the next slide, please. Thank you. I think it's a very short animation, but it gives very clear the message. It's no protection on the cardan shaft. It's a very common situation in agriculture. And it's another situation where many, many people every year, everywhere in the world get injuries. And this is a social cost. It's a very high social cost for countries. That's why they have to take care of uh, the human safety issue for operators working in agriculture. But let's go to the other items because we have also the environmental safety and the food security. In the next slide, we can have a clear idea of what environmental safety is. If we consider how much chemical is being used every year worldwide in different ways, from the small machines we see in the picture on the top of the slide to aerial spraying using a lot of chemical. And it leads to a lot of problems. And one of the main problems is related to drift. And you see the drift is pesticides not going on the crop, but going in the air, going to houses where people are living to schools where children are playing and so on. And the pesticide was not being used by the crop is going to the soil. From the soil is going in the water and it means pollution. This is just one of the examples of how important the environmental safety is. We have a lot of studies about that. There is one of the studies you can see in the first slide is a booklet made by FAO of the United Nations, which gives a very clear idea of how much chemical is being used worldwide. It's many kilograms per hectare every, every year. So we have to reduce it. Chemicals are necessary because chemicals are protecting our crops from diseases, from insects and so on. But often we give too much chemical. Even in Europe, we give too much chemical. Chemical has to be used only when needed and with proper machines. And I think the work that's been done by CISAM and I really thank CISAM for this good work, is going also in the direction of a better use of pesticides and machines using pesticides. Then we can go to the next slide. We're dealing always with environmental safety, and we see here some technical aspects that have to be, um, that are important and can reduce really the use and optimize the use of chemicals. The, dimension of the droplets, because the higher dimension has a lower drift aspect. And in the two pictures in the bottom, they are very simple to be understood. How to regulate a machine. A machine who is properly regulated can really have a better distribution of the chemical according to the crop being treated. We see an orchard sprayer here in the first picture, 
the distribution is bad because some parts of the plant are not uh, affected by the chemical. In the second picture, just regulating properly the machine, we can have an optimized distribution and a very good work done and less problems of chemical going into the soil. So you see how machinery is important even in the environment, even dealing with environment safety. Machinery, agricultural machinery is really a main issue dealing with safety. Finally, we have the food security with another big item. And we can go to the next slide, please. Food security is very important. It's also dealing with the use of chemicals, because if we give too much chemical, then we see we can have a lot of residual on our crops. But even the machine that's not properly regulated or is not properly working can give on the field, on one part of the field, too much water and on the other part of the field too much chemical. This is another example we can take that the concentration of the chemical inside the tank has always to be the same in a sprayer. And the concentration is provided by a very small plastic device that's very important in the machine. And if this device is not properly regulated or properly mounted, we can distribute water at the beginning of the field and double concentration of chemical at the end of the field with a lot of damage, environmental damage. And here we come again to the main issue that is the agricultural machine. So agricultural machine is really the central point of safety in agriculture is the connection be between man, between environment and food security. Is it the central point of everything? Maybe we can go to the next slide, please. And for this reason, I really appreciate the work being done, done in uh, the networks as the Anthem network is the European network and the Asian network in the Asian Pacific region. Because networks work at three levels. Standardization, they can take standards from existing standards or in case there is no standard, they can uh, develop standards. But the standard is not enough. You need also a testing activity and a certification activity. And everything has to be done on a common platform. And Antam in Asia is really a very important common platform for doing this work. And the first three methodologies or codes, how they are called in the Antam network, are really very important because in the codes, you have the keys to work properly and to put in the market machines that satisfy requirements for human safety, for environmental safety, and for the food security, especially when we deal with machines using chemicals. So the approach basing on the three items, standardization, testing and certification, is the best approach that can be done. And it's exactly what is being done in international networks as OECD, as Antam in Europe or Antam in Asia. And that's very important. So I really invite all stakeholders to take in high consideration the work done in these networks. Um, there should be another slide with a few words about Enama because I don't want to take too much time. Before Enama, here we see the process of uh, the network, the standardization, the testing and the certification. Consider always these three items together. The first one is making the rule 
The second one is applying the rule and the tiered one certification is the assessment that everything has been properly done. So only considering those three steps together, we can offer the best guarantee to all stakeholders that everything has been done in a proper way. And this is exactly what the networks are doing. Standardization is basing on an harmonized standardization, so it's an agreement among all participants, because I can understand that in different countries you have different needs, different requirements, so often it's a kind of compromise, would not be the proper word, it's a kind of agreement. We agree that this is the limit, we agree that this is a good limit and we have to stay behind the limit. Then the testing. The testing is a critical evaluation. Critical evaluation of the machine, basing on the methodology or code requirements. And as I said before, the certification is the final assessment. It's made by a third party body because there should be no interest in, uh, in the process. It should be a total independent assessment. And if everything is properly done, the machine can have a certification and the machine will go on the market with a certification. It means that the machine will have all the safety requirements uh, satisfied. And it means that for governments, it's a way to have a high quality machines on the market with a third party assessment. And it means on the other side to save a lot of money on the safety issue, on the performance issue and so on. Finally, a few words about Enama. Enama is the, it's in the next slide, please. Um, oh, no, sorry. We had before the three networks uh, I forgot this slide. Uh, we have the OECD network that will be uh, displayed in detail by our colleagues from OECD that's dealing for tractors. It's the network, the global network for agricultural tractors. And then the Asian and Pacific region network and the European network. These are the three existing networks for agricultural machinery testing. The first is dealing with tractors only, and the other two with agricultural machinery, because you have the implements that go behind the tractor, and they are really very important too. And now I think we come to the few words about Enama. In the next slide, please. Okay, Enama is uh, Italian. Uh, agricultural mechanization body and we are uh, the secretariat of the European network. We will have next week uh, a meeting of the European network with new ideas, new proposals, a lot of things to be discussed because we want to improve our testing activity inside the network. And uh, as an AMA in Italy, we are an accredited certification body, so we have to fulfill the international requirements for uh, accreditation. And we work a lot with agricultural machinery, but also with uh, many other products, even in the energy sector. So in conclusion, that's my message is very simple when using or purchasing an agricultural machine, so in the case of a farmer, a dealer, but even a manufacturer who is manufacturing a machine, it's very important to ask for an official test because for the manufacturer is a proof that he has done a good work. For a user, a farmer is a, a proof that he made a good investment and that all official standards have been fulfilled. This is very important because I see and I saw during the years in many occasions too many machines were unsafe. Unsafe machine means a risk 
means a problem for the farmer and means a social cost for the manufacturer. So final message was use only tested machines. There are a lot of testing activities, even at national level, but the best are, of course, the testing activities performed in international networks as the Asia and uh, Pacific network is providing for. And I really thank all the friends and colleagues of the member countries and of CISAM for the very good work done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Laboratory, for uh, this very uh, interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I think it has uh, very well uh, set the webinar's focus uh, and then also provided some definitions and some examples uh, of how safety is managed and uh, so very well illustrated in, in the various slides uh, that, that you presented. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, all the, the questions could uh, come in through the uh, chat functions on YouTube and on uh, MS Teams. Uh, now, uh, let me proceed to invite uh, our uh, second speaker for uh, this session, uh, Mr. Uh, Yan Yue, uh, Engineer at the Science and Technology Innovation Department uh, of the China Certification and Accreditation Institute uh, under the Certification and Accreditation Administration of uh, China. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Yue, uh, you have the floor uh, and the time available is uh, 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's so glad to have uh, the opportunity to communicate with you. My topic is certification and uh, agricultural machinery product in China. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce the relationship of State Council SA MR and CCAI. Uh, CCAI is short for uh, China China Certi Certification and Accreditation Institute. Uh, after institutionalization reform, the function of CNCA are divided into two departments because of international cooperation. CNCA keep its name so is the standard standardization ad, administration of China. In China, the classification of certification are, pro, are product certification, system certification, and uh, service certification. Product certification includes compulsory product certification and voluntary product certification. Compulsory product certification short for CCC is a product quali qualification evaluation system implemented by gov governments in accordance with law and regulations in order to protect the safety of customers' lives animals and plant, plants, uh, environment and national security. The instance of CCC is a safety certification. Uh, and there are two types of voluntary product, product certification. Uh, voluntary product certification system independent uh, uniformly by country. Uh, includes uh, low carbon products, uh, energy saving products, and so on, uh, divided into 21 categories, categories according to product types. There are, and also we have system, system certification and uh, service certification, include quality management system, environment management system, and so on. Uh, this is our CCC mark. Uh, why we need why we need certification uh, from from the system construction 
quality, quality is threshold that China must cross from a big manufacturing country to a powerful manufacturing country. Quality certification is a basic system to strengthen quality management and improve market efficiency under condition and market economy. The, trans the, tra the transition from allowance to certification is an in effective way. Uh, from the data, uh, industrial demand is huge in China by the end of uh, 2019. Certification and accreditation activities, activities have fully covered all sectors of nation, national economy and all fields of society. There are 700 certification bodies, more than 44 thousand inspection and test and and testing institutions, uh, and the business income have reached uh, 322.5 billion. It is an important category of industry. High-tech high service industry and scientist technology service industry. Uh, and uh, nearly uh, 780 thousand organizations have obtained certificates, certificates ranked first in the world for many years. Uh, why benefit? The basic function of the basic function of certification certification is that of credit card is invaluable to the rule of the third part of witness. The essential attribute of authentication and recognition is transfer trust, service de development. This transfer of trust, on the other hand, is cover trust to customers. Go shopping in the mall and know that that, that thing is more re reliable. On the, on the other hand, it is transmitted trust to society, government, and enterprises, and the international community. Physician examination, physician in examination certificate of quality management, uh, whether it is product certification or management system of certification, all the international standard of ISO 9001 quality management system. There is a complete, complete set of quality management evaluation requirements for the whole production pro process and other links. If it's product certification, the final product must meet in the standards. Therefore, the certification authority should evaluate both the product and the whole management system before issuing the certifi certificate, which depends on what kind of certification to apply for. Pass check, pass check of uh, international trade. It uh, may also be goal of all countries. Uh, one, sta one standard, one test, one certification, and global adoption. Uh, in January 2018, China State Council issued op opinions on stressing suggesting the construction of a quality certification system and pro promoting totally quality management, improve the compulsory certification system. We will give full play to the rule of compulsory certification in protecting the bottom line. According to the product risk level, level and the industry in, induced, induced to Majority establishment by the dynamic adjustment of certification catalogs 
gradually transfer the low risk product out of the certification catalog and gather the in industrial structure adjustment. Our re reform goal of compulsory product certification is to build a, con a, build a comprehensive scientific and effective CCC certification system. Uh, the system will be more mature and finalized. The security attributes will be more ob obvious, and the certification implementation will be more friendly. And the reform was mainly carried out in four aspects. aspects. Cut down on product catalog, let the burden of the address, and the de design, design, design the agency, strengthen market, Supervisions. It also, it is also appointed out in the gatherings in innovation of voluntary certification system. Uh, uh, at the government, at the government level, we. One, we would like to create environment to fight supervision and promote, promote fight competition. And finally, the government and the institutions build up a joint governance model. In terms of agricultural machinery, the State Council also issued guidance in the December 2018. The state, the state Council issued guidance opinions on acquiring the trans, transformation and the upgrading of agricultural machinery, machinery and the agricultural machinery equipment industrial. And we will accelerate the formulation and the standard for precision agriculture intentionally agricultural machinery and green agricultural machinery and built a standard system for modern agricultural machinery and equipment. Overview of agricultural machinery certification, uh, and there are one major category, category, category and uh, two products. One cup of certification in the pan, in the one copy of certification implementation rules. This picture is the rules, is the rule. 482 and press and presses in China and uh, uh, 784 certificate certificates overseas overseas 13 and press and. Uh, 20 certificates in China. And we have two designated the certification bodies, CAM and the CA and the, and the SAM. Uh, at designated the laboratory. This is the detail. Agricultural machinery product certification includes composable product certification and voluntary product certification. Uh, we accept, an, uh, accept direct of compulsory product certification result. The, the, the categories range should be determined according to the impl in, implementation rules from for compulsory product Certification and, agri and agricultural machinery products issued by National Certification and Ag Agritation Regulatory Department. Uh, the, first the first bench carried out pilot projects for what voluntary product certification. The first bunch of pilot products are Wheeled tractors below 100 horsepower, sugar 
har harvesters, rotary, rotary tillers, and micro tillers. Mainly based on notice of CNCA and the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs of printing and uh, distributing the general re requirements of implement implementation rules of certification and agricultural machinery voluntary products announcement uh, issued in 2018. This picture is uh, the notice. The scope of notice have been said before. The it should be used together with the implementation rules of voluntary product, product certification of, of agricultural machinery. The certification mo model is table test and initial factory inspection and tracking and tracking inspection after certification. The certification best basis standards and requirements in 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 simple, the last video issued by the National State Standard the Nation Administration Administrative Department should be implemented. And this is uh, this is our certification mark style. Uh, the use of certification marks should be directly marked on the, each product. The mark can only Used be used on product approved for certification. The certification matter cannot replace the product certificate. And the certificate holder may adopt any of the four mode methods of the of unified printing of standard special specification marker, model type, secure screen, print. Print, printing or name plant printing. Uh, okay, I have finished my my speech. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Yan Yue, for uh, uh, again a very interesting presentation, uh, which has explained uh, some of the various benefits of safety certifications and also provided examples of uh, uh, Chinese policies uh, related to uh, certification uh, and agriculture machinery in China. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, so we are now at the end of uh, this first uh, substantive session uh, and we've had uh, two good uh, presentations. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, both our presenters for giving an overview of uh, what is safety and uh, why it is important to uh, certify it. And uh, uh, just uh, another reminder uh, and an invitation to uh, please submit your uh, questions uh, in the uh, chat uh, box. Uh, you can continue to submit, uh, you know, as we go along and yeah. we will take them in the uh, Q&A uh, session. So please don't wait till, till we come to the Q&A. You are uh, free to submit them right away. Uh, so with that, we will move to uh, the uh, second of the uh, substantive uh, sessions. Uh, on uh, this one will be on safety testing uh, in agriculture machinery. Uh, so uh, this session is uh, aimed at uh, providing an overview of the practical aspects of uh, safety testing. Uh, and once again, we have two uh, knowledgeable experts to uh, share their uh, experience and uh, expertise uh, with us. Uh, I would uh, first like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Kawase uh, Yoshiyuki, the uh, coordinator of the International Relations Department of uh, Research Promotion of the Institute of Agricultural Machinery, uh, National Agriculture and Food Research Organization of uh, Japan, or uh, IAM NARO. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Kawase uh, will provide us an overview of the safety testing in uh, Japan. So, uh, Mr. Kawase, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much. So um, I'll start my presentation. Um, uh, okay. I hope you're seeing uh, my presentation. Is it okay? Uh, not yet. Uh, Oh, 
Oh, is it then? Uh, no change? Uh, no, we're still not able to see the slides. Or uh, if you prefer, we could also share from our side. OK, yeah, maybe that's better. OK, so let me just request the technical team to please uh, show your presentation. OK, please okay. go ahead. Please go ahead. OK, thank you very much. Um, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my presentation is uh, ensuring the safety of the farmers through safety test and agricultural safety in uh, information in Japan. Okay. okay next, next slide, please. Um, so in the 1970s, um, the uh, agriculture machinery sold in Japan were quite uh, dangerous, uh, as you can see in the photo. So in 1976, as a countermeasure for the frequent occurrence of farm work accidents, MAF issued a circular implementation guideline of agriculture machinery safety equipment testing measures, uh, 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 the rationale of safety test. Uh, then IM has conducted uh, the safety test for 9,969 units of agriculture machines for 41 years. Um, unfortunately, the framework for a safety test based on the government scheme was abolished in 2017. But as an alternative, an upgrade safety test system is now on, uh, conducted by IM NARO has started consequently. Next slide, please. So uh, this is a proposed and system of the safety test. So we have uh, three uh, purpose. Uh, one is to check the safety features of the agriculture machinery. The second is to promote agriculture machinery with safety features. And third, to prevent uh, agriculture machinery accidents. And below is the safety test uh, system. Uh, I am in the middle is the Institute of Agriculture Machinery, uh, the uh, institute that I belong to and that uh, conducts the safety test. And, uh, and below you see a MAF as the, the authority uh, giving uh, us the authority to conduct the safety test. And if the safety test is mandatory, we can force uh, manufacturers to take the test and uh, decide what kind of test that we want to do. Though um, on this, uh, this safety test is a, a, a optional test. Uh, it's not mandatory. So we need a consensus uh, throughout the agriculture industry. So we've, uh, uh, we made a agriculture machinery safety test promotion committee. This is consists by ac academic experts, agriculture machinery manufacturers, concerned bodies, agriculture workers, public administrations, and etc. So uh, the manufacturers, the workers have a saying in what should go into the safety test or not. And by this consensus, consensus um, the manufacturers would apply to IAM to, uh, for the test and the IAM test uh, will uh, conduct the test and the results will be uh, uh, passed to the manufacturers as a pass and fail test. So this uh, whole scheme, this system is very important to have a consensus that the safety test is important. Next slide, please. Uh, this is um, the uh, safety feature list in the safety test. So we have one to 17 numbers that we have to check on the safety test. We have uh, protection for moving parts, uh, PTO, ROPS, and others. Next slide, please. So this is an example of a safety test. Uh, this is an example of a, a tractor. Uh, we'll be checking on protection for moving parts, uh, steps, grips, handrails, and ROPs. Uh, we have ROPs here. Um, after uh, my presentation, uh, 
uh, Mr. Jose will be presenting uh, on this uh, with the uh, OECD uh, testing uh, scheme. Uh, the ROPS will be checked if it is uh, uh, mounted onto the uh, tractor. It will not uh, be tested uh, the uh, quality or uh, the performance of the ROPS. Uh, of course, and uh, uh, we will check the labels, indication labels, and caution labels. And if the machine passes uh, the safety test, uh, NARO would uh, will issue a certification a label uh, shown on the left upper side, the green label. And um, the manufacturers are able to put this label onto the machine and sell it in the market. Uh, farmers will recognize this label and understand that the, this machine has passed the safety test. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a photo of the a safety test. And uh, as you can see, uh, the tester is checking uh, the PTO, uh, the caution label, and so forth. Uh, and the uh, testers are not using any uh, uh, expensive equipment. We use a couple of gadgets, but it's very small and it's very easy to uh, conduct. Uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the difficult part on the safety test is that we have to check all uh, of the machine. And so we have to understand the machine's uh, functions and uh, the structure of the machine. So prior to the safety test, we ask the manufacturers to bring in the a manual, the tutorial to uh, read. And we will read uh, all the uh, manuals and see a, what kind of machine we are testing and understand the functions and so forth. And uh, the machines that are going to be tested will be machines that will go into the market, not a prototype. Next slide, please. So after uh, the safety test started, uh, as on the upper side, uh, we can see uh, a walking type tractor and head feeding type combined uh, harvester. On the uh, left side, you can see the walking type tractor has uh, the uh, uh, driving uh, belt uh, exposed. It's very dangerous. On the right side, you can see the combined harvester. Have, uh, you can see the uh, steel chain that will be holding the uh, rice uh, straw while it's uh, husked and uh, it, it is exposed is also it's very dangerous. And, and the photo uh, 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 beneath, uh, you can see the belt is covered by a cover. And uh, of course, in the uh, combined harvester, the chain is covered as also. So we have a significant change in the machine structure. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and uh, the safety test standard is based on the human body. Uh, on the left side upper, you can see a, a hand uh, uh, fingers. If there is an opening uh, near the a dangerous uh, part, moving part, if the opening is over eight millimeters and under 20 millimeters, uh, that means uh, you can uh, put your finger through, but not the hand. So uh, the opening and the dangerous part has to be uh, ha ha has to have a distance more than 120 uh, 120 millimeters. So if it's the hand, it's 200 millimeters. If it's the arm, uh, 850 millimeters. So uh, as the standard is based on the human body, you can apply this standard to any kind of machine. Uh, next slide, please. Next, I would like to talk about the agricultural safety information. Uh, this graph shows a fatal accident rate uh, case per year per uh, uh, 100,000 people. So in the bottom, the orange line shows the overall occupational accidents. Uh, the blue, uh, uh, the next one is a traffic accident and above there's the uh, construction industry. Unfortunately, in the agriculture industry, uh, the uh, 
uh, rate is uh, increasing compared to the others declining. Um, one of the problem is that in the con construction industry, you have an employee and employer. The employer has uh, obligation to uh, uh, for their employee to take uh, a course or training of, uh, on the working environment. But in the agriculture industry, most of the farmers are self employees. So they're the employer and the employee themselves. So they don't uh, uh, train themselves. So that's a big problem. And, um, uh, and of course, this graph is for fatal accidents. We're not including injuries. Next slide, please. So IM has been uh, conducting training and uh, workshops for uh, safety, uh, agricultural safety. And uh, so in uh, 2002, we started on uh, spreading information through narrow websites. Uh, we made a website called Narrow Agriculture Safety Information Center. This uh, web page consists of accident cases, awareness raising information, safe operation methods, and etc. Also, we have an e-learning quiz format to learn safety operation. Um, unfortunately, this is only in Japanese. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. And in this um, uh, web page, we uh, can you go back? Sorry. One slide back. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, in this web page, we have an accident fact finding survey. Uh, this is for farmers and leaders to learn about accidents, enable to search and access accidents uh, cases in Japan. Uh, you can choose the uh, crop that you are uh, you want to search in, and you can narrow it down by the type of accident, name of machinery and equipment, and you can display it in an individual report by the PDF. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, report, uh, so we're able to search calls and countermeasures that are similar in the region. So in the report, we have the overview, emergency and treatment and cause of accident and post uh, accident and desirable measures. And this is very uh, useful. Next slide, please. And here we have the interactive training tool for agricultural safety. So we conduct uh, training for agriculture safety. Uh, this is a tool for that. Uh, and uh, the target for this uh, training is company small working groups, so we can communicate easily. And uh, we have a preliminary survey sh uh, sheet that uh, we give out for the uh, to the group, uh, and and for. And uh, collecting this survey sheet, we can uh, have a grasp of the experience of the participants in, in advance. Next slide, please. And then uh, the uh, trainer can focus on training on the actual near miss experience and enable to check uh, countermeasures in advance and can present the specific environment by categorizing by machine environment and work method. Next slide, please. On the actual uh, training uh, on the uh, lower left side, you can see an example of accident cases. Uh, we can show uh, how it uh, occurred and that's a uh, very effective. And, and uh, we can encourage uh, opinions and ideas through dialogue with participants based on experience uh, of near miss and, and countermeasures. And at the end of the training, we can create a voluntary and an effective common targets. As the group is small, we can go into specific countermeasures. And this uh, uh, tool is uh, for interactive training and improvements regardless of the interviewer. Okay, next slide, please. So in summary, uh, we uh, uh, introduced the safety test. This is the hardware approach for safety in agriculture. We may try to make the uh, machine itself as safe as possible, uh, but as if the machine is used 
incorrectly in a dangerous way. It caused accidents. So uh, the Agriculture Safety Information Center is the software approach uh, to this. So we need both sides to uh, uh, are important to excel the agriculture safety. Next slide, please. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kawase, uh, for uh, the very interesting presentation. And I think uh, uh, there's a lot of experience uh, of uh, safety testing in Japan, I think, and that uh, shows. Uh, so thank you for uh, sharing uh, this uh, experience uh, uh, with us. Uh, so we will now move to the, um, the the final presenter in our substantive sessions. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Jose uh, Brambila Macias, uh, Program Manager of the Trade and Agriculture Directorate of the Codes and Schemes uh, of uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD. So uh, the floor is yours, uh, Jose. Uh, thank you. Do you see my, my screen? Uh, yes, we do. Ah, perfect. Let me check. So, so it's fine. Is it working? Yes, please go ahead. OK, so I will speak to you briefly of the importance and advantages of having a common safety uh, test procedures. But uh, first, let me explain you better who we are and what we do for those who do not know uh, OECD. Uh, the OECD tractor codes uh, was established in 1959. Actually, last year we celebrated our 60th anniversary. Uh, currently, we have 27 member countries. We're an intergovernmental organization. Uh, we have countries in Asia. I mean, we have China, we have Japan, we have Korea, we have India. Uh, we have countries in Latin America like Brazil. We have uh, the United States and most European countries are part of our group. Uh, we have a big network of accredited testing stations around the world. Uh, I am NARO, for example, is our accredited testing station in Japan. We have uh, Kotec and Camtech in China, just to give you some examples in Asia. Uh, we have nine codes or uh, test procedures. Uh, we have one code that will uh, test the performance of the tractor, the engine of the tractor. We have one ergonomic code that will test the noise levels inside the cabin of the tractor. And then we have seven codes that will test the strength, I mean the safety of the protective structures of the tractors in case of a rollover accident. We saw uh, an example of a rollover accident in the first presentation from Enama, from Sandro Liberatori. And uh, those, unfortunately, are one of the most common accidents. So that's why we try to certify the safety of uh, the protective structures. Uh, over the years, we have uh, certified more than 3,000 tractor models uh, for their performance and over 10,000 tractor models for the safety of the protective structures. But uh, let me tell you, I mean, now what we are. I mean, the tractor codes are a set of rules and test procedures to certify tractors. And the main aim is to facilitate trade amongst our member countries. So we certify mainly the safety of the protective structures of the tractor. And our system is based on mutual recognition and third party certification. What does this mean? Well, it means that all our member countries need to recognize uh, the tests conducted in another member country. However, and this is very important, countries cannot unilaterally issue the certificate. Uh, and in this sense, the OECD system is unique uh, because we have an extra layer of checks and controls. We, I mean, OECD takes the responsibility to check that all the test reports uh, uh, and ensure that they have been done according to our rules and regulations. So we guarantee that a tractor tested in China, for example, has followed the same rules and test, uh, has been tested according to our uh, regulations, uh, no matter if the tractor is tested in Asia, in Europe or in America. And this levels the play field for industry 
and provides the highest level of safety for all tractor users. But now, let me explain you briefly, in more detail, uh, our codes, our test procedures. First of all, you will notice that we start with code number two. There is a reason. Originally, we had a code number one, but that was merged into code number two. Uh, but in order to avoid confusion, we kept this numbering. So we start with code number two. Uh, you can see on the left hand side or per side of the slide, there's a tractor pulling a truck. That's one example of the test that uh, the tractor needs to undergo when we test the performance of the tractor with code two. Uh, on the right hand side of the slide, you have code five. You see these uh, noise waves. This is our ergonomic uh, test procedure, and we want to measure the noise levels inside the cabin of the tractor. So our code two and code five uh, don't have limits. I mean, we, we it's not a pass or fail. We only measure. I mean, the performance of the tractor, for example, energy efficiency, the power of the engine. And for the code five, the noise levels, we only measure how noisy is the cabin. So we report this information and then each uh, tractor user or, or buyer can decide according to this information. All the other codes, code three, code four, until code 10, are our safety codes. These are pass or fail. We want to guarantee that the tractor is safe enough to uh, guarantee the survival of a tractor driver in case of an accident. Uh, the most common accident is a rollover of the tractor. So now let me bring your attention to code three. Code three is the standard test procedure that we have to, to certify the strength of the rollover protective structure. Code three is, is the, our dynamic test. You can see on the right hand side, upper side of the slide, there's a small tractor fixed to the ground and it's being hit by a pendulum, a weight that will hit the tractor from one side. This is the dynamic test and it wants to simulate the impact of the tractor in case of a rollover. If we move to the left hand side of the slide on code four, again, this is the standard test procedure that we have, but this is a static test. That's the difference between code three and code four, is that this one is static. And we have a bench press that will crush the tractor from above, again, to try to simulate uh, the effects of a rollover of the tractor. Then we have specialized codes for uh, certain type of tractors. For example, if you go to code six on the right hand side of the slide, you will see that this code focuses on uh, narrow track uh, wheeled tractors that have the rollover protective structure in the front of the tractor. Code seven again is on focusing on narrow track tractors that have the protective structure in the back of the tractor. If we move to the left, we have code eight. Again, the, the focus of this uh, code is on track laying tractors. Again, we want to, to ensure the safety of the of the cabin of the tractor. Always on the left, if we go to code nine, we are going to uh, this code focuses on telehandlers. And finally, code 10, it focuses on forestry tractors. And here the main focus is not the rollover, but uh, to check the resistance of the cabin in case of a falling object hitting the tractor from above. It can be a heavy branch from the trees that hits the, the cabin from above. And then we want to certify that the, the cabin is strong enough to survive this type of accident. Now, let me over, uh, give you an overview. This is an oversimplification of how uh, the test procedure works. This is an example of how code four works. First, we need to identify a clearance zone. This is an area around the driver of the tractor. The area that we want to be sure that is protected in case of an accident. In case of a rollover, this area should be protected. So uh, code four is a static uh, test. So we have a crushing beam. You can see in the middle of the slide that will start crushing uh, the cabin of the tractor. 
on the right hand side you can see that there will be deformation on the cabin of the tractor but as long as this deformation doesn't touch or penetrate the clearance zone this is a pass test so either it fails or it passed if it passed we can certify that uh, it guarantees the safety of the driver so uh, there will be a test report you can see it there uh, but this is done at national level in our accredited OECD testing stations. But as I told you in the past, testing stations cannot unilaterally issue the, the certificate. So let me explain you the process, how it works. Uh, if a manufacturer wants to, to put on the market a new tractor model, they will approach an accredited OECD testing station. It could be in Japan, uh, I am narrow, for example. I am narrow will test the, the tractor. They will prepare a report and they will send this report to what we call the OECD coordinating center. This center has our experts that know very well our rules and regulations. Currently, our coordinating center is ENAMA in Rome. I mean, Sandro Liberatori is the director of this center. And every three years, we launch a tender to choose the coordinating center that will be responsible to check in and ensuring that all the test reports submitted by our network of testing stations have been done according to OECD rules and regulations. So once they have checked this, they will authorize the testing station to issue the certificate. The testing station then will provide a certificate to the tractor manufacturer, and then the tractor manufacturer can put the, the tractor on the market. Now, what are the advantages of having this type of, of common system for, for safety test procedures? Well, first of all, that we will have a global certificate. As I mentioned before, I mean, uh, OECD certificates are valid in all our member countries. So they're valid in, in China, in India, in Japan, in Korea, in Russia, uh, in the United States, in Brazil. Uh, and uh, we have uh, equivalence with the European Union. This means that uh, European Union has their regional requirements, but they are equivalent to OECD codes. So for example, if a manufacturer in China wants to export a tractor to the European Union, they have two options. They can test their, their tractor with the European Union, or they can do it directly in China with OECD and that the test will be valid in the European Union. The other key issue is that we have a fast turnaround. We know that uh, uh, time is money. So uh, we have on average uh, a four day turnaround to, uh, to issue a certificate. So for example, a tractor company can go on Monday to an accredited testing station. They can test the tractor. The testing station will send a report to our coordinating center in Rome. They will check it and maximum by Thursday, they will issue the certificate. So by Friday, the tractor company can put their product on the market. Other advantage is the enhanced credibility and fair trade. I mentioned that we have this extra ledger of checks and controls, and we guarantee that no matter where in the world the tractor is, is tested, they will all follow the same rules and procedures. Uh, we guarantee the operator safety because we guarantee that, again, no matter where in the world, the, uh, the user of tractor will have the same level of protection. Uh, we are in constant evolution. We have constant meetings like at Antam every year to evaluate the situation. If there are new uh, technology developments that we need to be aware of, we can act. For example, in the past, uh, the tractor protective structures were made of steel. Nowadays, many protective structures are made of, of plastics. So we need to adapt our tests to take into account the new materials. Uh, we are growing. We are open to non-OECD member countries. So every country that is interested, they can join, join so they can bring new markets. And this is one of the key advantages of having a common system is that we have noticed an increase in exports amongst our member countries of 23%. So with this 
I would like to close with a short video to summarize what I just told you. Oh, but it's not working on my side. May I ask the, if you can do it for, from the secretariat, please? So we will try and do that now. Yes, thank you. It's very short, it's only two minutes. Only two minutes. So. He was a celebrity back in 1949. He was the first farmer in France to receive a tractor through the Marshall Plan. Today, Monsieur Jolivet is no longer a celebrity and his farm is not at all unique because 47,957 Marshall Plan tractors followed this first one onto the farms of France. Tractors played a crucial role in Europe's development in the aftermath of the Second World War. Many were funded under Marshall Plan aid. Since then, tractors have revolutionized agriculture around the world and are critical to improving farm productivity. But they are also the most frequent cause of deaths and serious accidents on farms. If they are not handled with care, tractors can tip over, trapping people underneath. Falls from moving tractors can be fatal. The OECD has been working for more than 50 years on establishing, maintaining and updating tractor safety standards. Its system of harmonized tests and codes established across 26 countries, including China, Russia and India, is now being extended throughout Latin America, Asia and Africa. The OECD codes test tractor performance, noise and pollution levels, as well as operator safety, particularly protection from rollovers and falling objects. More than 3,000 tractor models have been tested since the first code was established in 1959. Every year, farmers, manufacturers and government officials meet at the OECD in Paris to update the codes and ensure the tests are adapted to the latest developments and conditions. The chair of the Tractor Codes meeting, Sandro Libratori, explains the challenges they face. We see that in the world we have different conditions. We have areas like Europe, the north of the Americas, where machines are widely used and there are very modern machines. But we have other areas where machines are quite old and uh, agriculture is moving forward and they need new machinery, they need to update all the machines they are using. A country's adherence to the tractor codes also guarantees internationally agreed safety and environmental standards for their manufacturers. This can help companies seeking to expand their export markets. The OECD tractor codes are plowing on, benefiting farmers and manufacturers. Thank you, uh, Jose, for uh, this uh, very uh, interesting presentation uh, once again. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, given a, a very good OECD perspective uh, on why uh, regional standards are, are important and the operational aspects of, uh, of, the, of these standards. Uh, so uh, thanks to the uh, both the presenters in the second substantive session as well. Uh, and uh, we will now move on to uh, the uh, Q&A uh, session. Uh, we have received uh, a number of uh, questions, both on the uh, on, on the MS Teams chat as well as on uh, YouTube. Uh, so uh, let me start off uh, perhaps uh, with the first question to uh, Dr. Sandro uh, Liberatori. Uh, so uh, Sandro, uh, how can farmers know uh, if a machine has been properly tested? I think a very practical, straightforward question. So uh, please share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. And uh, uh, at present time, you can refer to the existing networks 
I know that uh, if it's a machine coming from Europe, you have the Entam uh, network who is providing for uh, all tests. And on the website, you can find all the information about tested machines. But you have a lot, as other speakers told before in the, during this conference, you have a, a lot of national testing activities they can refer to as in Japan, as in uh, India, in China, and in other countries. Uh, so what my message was is to refer only to tested machines and not buy just a machine, but look at the test because you are investing a lot of money. Before investing money, you must be sure that it is a safe machine and it's a really good performing machine. I hope, of course, that in the near future, you will have Anthem Asian uh, network tested machine. So a very huge database as the OECD database is with more than 3000 tractors, as we heard before, that have been tested and that a lot of implements will be tested according to the Anthem codes in Asia for a good service to farmers. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Sandro. Uh, we have uh, another question for uh, 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 the representative from uh, CNCA, uh, Mr. Yuan Yue. So uh, what are the trends for international uh, mutual recognition of machinery and uh, agricultural products. So what, what are the trends that you see? Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Yanjua, uh, if you can hear me. Uh, yes, I can. Okay. So what, what are the trends, some of the trends for uh, international mutual recognition of uh, machinery and agricultural products? How do you see the system evolving? It's not very clear, uh, but uh, I want to uh, replay your question that you want to you, you want to ask to uh, answer the system of the uh, agriculture machine product uh, certification yes is system yes yes please okay uh, the system uh, the agriculture machine uh, products uh, certification system includes uh, compulsory certification and volunteer voluntary certification and compulsory certification mentioned the safety safety certification is also called it as a safety certification and volunteer certification of the agriculture machinery products uh, uh, mentioned uh, the quality and its function of the products is the volunteer certification. Uh, so uh, the compulsory certification is uh, as the government is government uh, role or regulation for the uh, agriculture machinery uh, products. Uh, I'm not sure my answer is clear or or not. Uh, this is this is useful. I think it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for for, for that. Uh, I think we have uh, time enough for a couple more uh, questions. Uh, so we'll maybe just pick some from the the uh, the, the all, all those that came. So perhaps for uh, Mr. Kawase, uh, there's a question. Uh, how do you encourage the users of agriculture machinery to report any accidental uh, injuries or near misses in uh, in incidents? Uh, thank you very much for your question. Um, um, at the moment, we do not have uh, such a scheme. We conduct a survey on uh, agriculture groups, uh, companies, and, uh, and ask them to report that did you have any kind of accident, did you experience any near, uh, near injuries, and so forth. Um, 
and so we don't have a scheme uh, because um, if the accident occurs in the farm, it's a private land. Um, if it's on the road, yes, the police come convene and they have to report what kind of accident. But in a private land, uh, there is no obligation to report. Um, uh, uh, at, at this in New Japan, we don't have a good scheme to uh, collect that kind of uh, data, but we are uh, trying to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then for uh, our representative from OECD, uh, Jose. So, um, uh, is uh, is the safety test separate from the performance test of the machinery, or is it just part of it? Uh, the question yeah, yeah. to me. Uh, yeah. No, no. Yes. Uh, to, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes. Jose, please sorry. go ahead. No, no, they are separate. I mean, code two is mainly the performance of, of the tractor and the engine, while all the other codes we focus on the safety of the cabins in case of rollover. And if I may very quickly on the trends of of, of the test, I think I see that we are moving from uh, national. To regional. I mean, Antam is one example of that, that you are trying to prepare a, a network regionally for Asia. I know that in Africa there are other efforts similar and in Latin America as well. So I think that in the coming years we are going to see a lot of regional uh, common standards and eventually I guess in the long term we will have more global standards. Thank you very much. Thank you and I think that's a great note to, uh, to, to end on. Uh, you know, is is uh, moving from the national to the regional and to the global. Uh, so I think that sort of we were we're running out of time. Uh, so uh, I know there are other questions uh, which are not yet answered, but uh, I would uh, just like to suggest that uh, you know uh, participants may please uh, indicate their uh, topics of interest uh, in the uh, uh, feedback survey uh, that uh, is being circulated. Uh, and uh, that will give us an opportunity to address uh, these topics of interest uh, in uh, potentially future webinars that uh, we, we organize or, or web based trainings that we organize. So do please uh, uh, you know, point out any uh, unanswered questions or any other topics of interest uh, in, in the feedback survey, which then we can pick up on. Uh, so uh, with that, I would uh, just like to uh, bring uh, this uh, this uh, web training uh, to uh, a close. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our uh, opening speaker and, and also our uh, very knowledgeable uh, presenters uh, from, uh, from 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 the different countries that uh, we have heard from. Uh, from uh, we've heard from OECD, we've heard from uh, CNCA, uh, we've heard from uh, from from Japan and from uh, uh, Inama. So uh, it's been uh, very uh, useful. I, I do hope that all the participants have found this of interest and, and of practical relevance in uh, using in, the, in their work. Uh, so uh, thank you very much once again to uh, all our participants who have joined us uh, either through YouTube or on MS Teams and from whichever part of the world, from whichever time zone. Uh, it was uh, great having you join us. Uh, thank you very much and uh, we look forward to, to, to meeting you and seeing you in future such uh, web trainings uh, again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.